We're in the uh, exercises now for 13G, which is the last section, and it's pretty much using vector calculus, which you've done before, and the classic formula F equals MA. So in this version of the formula, the force and the acceleration are going to be vectors. Mass will still stay being a scalar, and in this question you can actually see already the mass is one kilo, which makes this essentially just going to be F equals A. So here, you're also going to look at the idea that forces can be made up of multiple vectors. So here we've got an F1 and an F2 vector. Those two vectors added together are going to give us the total force. So in order for us to do this question, we first of all have to find the force, which is going to be F1 plus F2, which here would be 2i plus oh, minus 3j. It's a minus because it's a minus here. Newtons, that's the force. We know our mass in this question is equal to one kilo. And we don't know what our acceleration is, but the cool thing is the question is find the acceleration. So using F equals MA, we have acceleration equals times one equals the force. And because we don't really need to care about that times one, that is gonna be your acceleration, two I minus three J. And you could put units there as well, but it hasn't got, uh, you would assume, metres per second squared. Okay, the next one is B. What is the magnitude of the acceleration? Well, that's cool. Magnitude of the acceleration is just the magnitude of a vector. So each of the components in front of the I and the J being squared, which gives you a 4 and a 9, which means that the magnitude of this vector is square root of 13 units. Part C. What's the velocity? Now remember that velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to t. And if we integrate acceleration, when we integrate vector calculus, remember that you integrate with respect to t, so we add a t there, we add a t here. We also add a constant, which is a vector. And in order for us to know what this constant is, you can see here that the particle is initially at rest. So that means that when t equals zero, v equals zero. And what that implies is that 0 equals 0, 0, and c. So therefore, your velocity vector is 2ti minus 3tj. And that would be metres per second. Let's put the units. So we've now done those three things. What is the speed of the particle after one second of motion? Well, step one would be to find what's happening at one second of motion, and that will be two times one, which I'm just going to write as two i. Three times one is three j. So that's the velocity at time equals one. To find the speed, remember that speed is the magnitude of your velocity. And in this case, it's going to be the magnitude of the velocity at time equals one. So it's going to be square root of, and you'll notice it's the same thing that we just did before, so it's going to be square root of 13 metres per second as our speed. Now the last part of this question is direction of motion. Direction of motion wants you to look at um, what's happening for this particle as it travels. Now for the direction of motion, think about the velocity and the direction that it's going. At time equals zero, we know that we're at rest. And you can actually chuck time equals zero in here too and you get zero, zero. So if I draw myself a set of axes, this one up, I'm going to sketch out two points here. The starting point, which is here, when t equals zero. And for velocity, this is a velocity graph. This is the x direction and the y direction. We're here. When we go to t equals 1, so imagine subbing in t equals 1, we're at here, 2i, and negative 3j, that's here. So that's when t equals 1. Now what that means is that you have a path like this. Whenever it's to do with direction, it's to do with the velocity. And we're being asked for a bearing. It's a direction of motion. It's measured anti-clockwise from the direction of i, which means that you'll be measuring from here around like that. So what's probably easier for us to consider is really this little triangle here. It's a little right angle triangle. It's a three height, two length triangle. If we figure out what this angle here is, we can just take that away from 360. 
So in this example here, it's going to be opposite and adjacent. It's actually going to be tan theta equals opposite over, oops, opposite over adjacent. So theta is the inverse tan of 3 on 2. Let's use the CAS. And my calculator is set to radians. So remember, if you want to change that into degrees, you can um, go into here and do dd. And I'll just do that again. It's being really exact. So 56.31 degrees. And because it's asking you for the direction of motion measured from the eye direction, which is this direction, your direction is going to be 360 take away 56.31. Be 303.69 degrees off of I. So that's your direction of motion. This is a nice question, this one. It's about finding um, using the mass and uh, you're going to find ultimately the resultant force. Now we're just going to go through all the questions bit by bit and you'll see it's all stuff that we've done before. So the first thing is asking you for the initial position of the particle. The initial position is going to be when t equals 0 and this is our position vector. Remember this is like a displacement x. So if you pop a 0 in you're going to get 0i zero plus 2 lots of 0 plus 4j. So you're going to get 8j. So the initial position would be at 8j or if you wanted it as coordinates it would be 0, 08. Okay. That's part A. Part B, what's the Cartesian equation? Remember to find Cartesian equations, you have to go to parametric and then you go to Cartesian. So the parametric equations are x is everything in front of the i, y is everything that's in front of the j. And I'm just going to expand this out, okay? So 2t squared plus 8, because I find that it's a bit easier if you expand. Now you can see here the link is going to be the t squared. So t squared equals uh, x over 5 just rearranging this one, which then means that y equals t squared is x on 5, 2 times t squared, which is x on 5, plus 8. So your Cartesian equation is actually just linear, 2x on 5 plus 8. The last part, c, is asking for the resultant force. So remember that force is linked through mass and acceleration. And in this case, force is what we need. We need the mass, which we know in the question is 2 kilos. And we also need the acceleration. Now remember, acceleration is also the second derivative of the position vector. So if we find that, we can just substitute it in. So if we have a look here, we've got r dot. First derivative would be 10 ti plus, that's why it's good if you, you know expand. You can see it's a 2t squared, so that would be 4t j. Second derivative is going to be 10i plus 4j. And that is the same as acceleration. I use three equal signs because that means that is just the same thing. It's not a new thing. So therefore, your resultant force F is 2 lots of A, which is equal to 20i plus 8j, just multiplying this by 2. So that's your three parts of question 3. All right, this question is very similar to the one where we looked at the direction. Um, where we had to look at finding the velocity and then sketching it as a Cartesian and then we use that to find the direction as an angle. So the reason for that is you've been given a Cartesian equation here. It says a particle is moving along a path which can be described by the Cartesian equation y equals 3x. So straight up, I'm just going to sketch that. So it's a straight line. It's a bit steep. And it's going to be a slope of 3 which means you'd be going across 1 and up 3, like that. So y equals 3x, x and y. Okay, if the speed of the particle in the positive x direction is 5 metres per second, what is the speed of the particle in the positive y direction? Now speed is the magnitude of velocity, which is going to be just a length. So this is basically saying if you have this particle that's going along this path, same slope, but you know that it's 5 across in the x direction, 
then what is the height going to be? And we know that this is y equals 3x, so because of that it's going to be 3 times that length across, so it's going to be 15. So that means that you're actually doing 5 metres per second in the x direction, and you're doing 15 metres per second in the y direction. So we've got that part of the question. The next part it says find the speed of the particle. Now because we know the speeds in each direction we can actually put together a velocity vector and that's going to be the speed in the x direction plus whoops, a speed in the y direction like that. The 5 and the 15. And then if we're being asked for speed of the particle remember that that is the magnitude of the velocity. So it's going to be 5 squared plus the 15 squared. So I'll pop that in the calculator. Oops. And so it's going to be square root of 250. Which is the same as, now nice simplifying here of, of um, Surd's practice, you know that's 5 root 10. There's not much else you can do with that. So the speed of the particle would be 5 root 10. It's metres per second here, so it would be metres per second. And your direction in the y direction, your speed would be 15 metres per second. Okay, here we've got two forces acting on a particle and a mass. We've been given force, we've been given mass. It's going to be F equals MA. And the forces are measured in newtons. Because we've got two forces, remember that the overall force is going to be those forces added together. So it's going to be that force plus the second force, which is going to be 3i minus j. That's our overall force and we know that our mass is equal to 2. That means that F equals ma will imply that we've got 3i minus j equals 2a. So therefore, for part a of this question, I just sort of saw that it wanted acceleration. Our acceleration is going to be 3 over 2i minus a half j. I've just divided the 2 over. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part of this question is looking for velocity and it's telling you the position, um, it was initially at the point with position vector here and it was at rest. So what that means is when t equals 0, your velocity is 0. When t equals 0, your position is actually going to be 2i minus 2j. So those two conditions are just going to help you find x and v essentially. We're being asked to find velocity and position. So remember that velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time. So we're going to end up with 3 over 2t i minus a half t j plus some constant that we don't know. We know that when t is 0, v is 0. So that means that 0 equals 0, 0. That's actually going to make that 0 too. So that gives us our velocity. doesn't have any oops, other constant. And then our next part here is to find x. So that would be, I should label that, that's the answer to part b. And for part c, we're going to find x, which is the integral of v with respect to t. So that's going to be 3 on 2 t squared on 2, it's going to become a 4, minus a half of t squared on 2j plus another constant, I'm just going to call this a, oh actually not a, that's acceleration, I call it um, k. And now we use the condition we were given at the beginning, so we know that when t is 0 we have x being 2i minus 2j. So you can see here if we substitute 0 in we get 0, 0, we get k. So that means that k, that uh, constant vector, is 2i minus 2j. So therefore our vector x is equal to 3t squared on 4i plus or minus t squared on 4j plus 2i minus 2j. And you know if you wanted to as well what you could do is tidy that up a little bit. 
So you might like to um, put that together. I'll just put the final answer over here for C, which would be X of T equals all the stuff with the I. So that's all the I stuff together and all the stuff with the J. Now you'll notice both of them, them are negative, so you actually could factor the negative out and just make it a negative and a bracket. Negative um, T squared on 4 plus 2J. And it's a plus because I've just factored the negative out the front. So that would be your um, position of the particle at time T. All right, this is the last question we're looking at. Same kind of vibe, really. Um, you've got a position of particle of mass 2 kilos is given by this position vector. You've got Cartesian, we've got to find velocity, speed, resultant force. Resultant force straight up means we're going to use F equals MA. Boom. So we'll just go through them um, bit by bit here. So the first part is going to be Cartesian. So we know that for Cartesian we need to figure out what X is, which is the part in front of the I, and the Y is the part in front of the J. Now you can see here that t squared is equal to x over 2. You take the 2 over. So that means that y equals t squared is x over 2. So it's going to be x over 2 in place of the t squared plus that 6. So that's your Cartesian equation. For b, we want the velocity of the particle. Remember velocity is just the first derivative, which is going to be 4ti. And it's just great because it's all vector calculus. It's all stuff that you've done. It's not, not anything new that you're having to learn. And derivative is 2tj, and that's your velocity vector. Easy. C. At what time is the speed of the particle 16 root 5 metres per second? What that means is we need t when we have the velocity, uh, uh, the magnitude of velocity, equal to 16 root 5. So the magnitude of velocity because remember magnitude of velocity is speed so that's why we're doing that the magnitude of the velocity is going to be each of the components in front of i and j squared 4t squared is 16t squared 2t squared is 4t squared so this is actually the square root of 20t squared which is the same as the square root of 20 times the square root of t squared and we know the square root of 20 is 4 times 5 underneath the square root 2 root 5 is the 20 part simplified. Square root of a square is just the t itself. So that means that our speed is expressed as t root 2 root 5 t. So when the speed equals 16 root 5, that means that 2 root 5 t equals 16 root 5. It's so nice because the root 5 cancel and you end up with t equals 8 seconds. So that at time t equals 8 seconds, the speed of the particle will be 16 root 5 uh, metres per second. And for part d, the resultant force acting on the particle at time t, it's super easy. We're going to use f equals ma. We know what uh, the mass is, it's 2. We don't know the acceleration, but we can, because acceleration is the double derivative of r. We've already done the first derivative, so the second derivative here will be 4i plus 2j. So we now have a, and we just chuck it all together. m times a is going to be our resultant force. So that means that your final resultant force, and the last part of this section on dynamics, is 8i plus 4j. And it's a force, so Newton's.